Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan and I love colorful makeup and colorful language. So I'm here today to talk about products that I have hit pan on or finished. Kind of focused on what I've done this year, but just in general, kind of over my recent makeup journey thing. But I've been doing a little bit of an unofficial project pan for this year based on team project pan which was put together by Haley and Kat of Beauty News. So I've been tracking things. What I'm mostly going to talk about today are things I've hit pan on in the makeup world. I may towards the end touch on a little bit of the skincare I've used up. I think the biggest thing that I've really worked on are face products. So over the not even officially on my project, definitely not on my project pan, but before that, the first things I probably ever hit pan on were my ABH Moonchild um, Lucky Clover and Pink Heart highlighters. These colorful highlighters are what really got me into colorful highlighters. The green tone and the pink tone just, just work for me, work for my skin tone, especially of what was in that palette. I have them all depotted. I keep them even though I don't really reach for them anymore because nostalgia. The next thing in this palette is the Voodoo Highlighter from Luxie Beauty that I've talked about so much. This is my new go-to green highlighter. I just love this highlighter. I think it's absolutely stunning alien glow on my face and kind of in the swatches you can see just how much stronger Luxie is to ABH. This color is also a little bit more of a cool tone green um, and whereas ABH is more warm toned. I would love to find a green highlighter that had the more yellowy warm tone of the ABH one with the strength of the Luxie one. If anyone has recommendations, I'm listening. And the next highlighter I've hit pan on is ABH Starburst. This is from the Sugar Glow Kit. And this one I particularly had in my project pan. I just wanted to see if I could get there. And then once I did, I stopped. You can see that little sliver right there. I've used it a little bit since then, but it's like a go-to, but not a go-to at the same time. One of the other highlighters that I had focused on during this year was my Ofra Pillow Talk. This one I had definitely hit pan on and then it just like broke one day so it's all shattered in there so that's why I'm not opening it up. I I also love this one and I've said this in a previous video I'm just I'm not sure if I have the heart to repress it because I had broken it once pressed it then when I finally hit pan on it it was just so much more fragile. We'll see but this is an amazing icy icy pink highlighter. Over the course of probably the spring and summer, I really went in hard with my bronzers to try to hit some pan. So this is my butter bronzer. I've depotted it. And same story with that. When I depotted it, I ended up having to repress it. And then and then I went in and really made an effort to, to pan it. Now that I have stepped away from using this one, I feel like it's a little too strong and, and intense for me. But again, I'm not just going to declutter to declutter. The other bronzer that I hit pan on is my Wet n Wild. This was the Dragon bronzer release that I think they've now made permanent in a different packaging. So you can see this is Butter Bronzer and this is Wet n Wild. The Butter Bronzer is nice because it's a cooler tone bronzer that's still very, very warm on the cheeks. And then the Wet n Wild one looks much more red toned. The thing I realized with bronzer is that if you actively use it, I guess especially with these drugstore bronzers, it can be somewhat easy to hit pan. Right, I have my favorite bronzer right now, so I don't think I would repurchase any of those bronzers. In terms of highlighters, I might repurchase Voodoo, and I would probably repurchase Starburst if I ever ran out of that one. Pillow Talk, I'm not sure if I would repurchase or not. In terms of other face products, this one is not used up, but I have used a whole hourglass ambient lighting powder. This is diffused light. I think I used up the one that's 
lighter and more white tone than this. I haven't been using this as much, but I do still like these powders. At the same time, I understand why people sometimes think they're overhyped. Another finishing powder that I've used up is the Milani Prep Set and Glow Powder. I really like that powder, and I think if you're looking for a finishing powder with a soft sheen to it, and you're interested in Hourglass, but you feel like that's too much to, to, to pay, I would take a look at that one. They only have one color in that powder, which I think is a like something that they're missing out on. But it's a pretty powder from what I remember. I've also used up the Wet n Wild bronzer that's called Reserve Your Cabana. That's another beautiful like finishing powder. Although I think they discontinued that. In terms of other kind of powders, I finished a whole Cover FX loose setting powder. That one was fine. And then blush, I think my very first higher end blush purchase was a Clinique Cheek Pop in Pink Pop. And I used that to the almost to the bone. Those blushes are really pretty. They have a really nice sheen to them. They're not, in my opinion, super shiny, but they're also not matte. They're very firmly pressed, so I feel like you have to be used to that when you're going in. As you can see with my collection, I, I, I like to depot things, and I went through a series of like trying to depot so many different things I owned. I tried to depot that one, broke it, and found that it was in like a plastic netting thing. Repressed it in an empty pan I had, and just like, just used it. I just used it so much. Now that I have my Mojave Mauve from Cover FX, I'm not in the like lookout for another pink blush, but that was a good classic one that I used up. I think, I think from the time that Tarte Shape Pape launched to when I found my new concealer love, I used up two Shape Papes. That seems pretty intense on my end, but I, I really liked it. When I liked it, I really liked it. Um, now I'm onto my Too Faced, which the darker shade that I have, I think is about over half gone. I took the stopper out thinking it was closer, but there's still a lot of product in there. Setting sprays, I've definitely used up all nighters. I've used up an Ofra setting spray. Didn't like the sprayer on that at all. Mario Badescu sprays, lip, lip balms, and lip products. I'm a huge fan fanatic for good moisturizing lip products. My all time favorite still is the Laneige Sleeping Lip Mask. And those big jars, I've gone through two of them over the course of discovering them. The Jack Black Balm is a solid choice for me. I think I've gone through two of these in the last like year. It's not bad. It's one of those that's a decent enough price that I would buy a few at a time and keep one in a bag, keep one at work, that kind of thing. Not bad at all. I've used up a Kopari Lip Glossy, which was okay. It was it was a coconut oil based product, so it kind of had that coconut oil texture to me, but slightly more like thick and emollient. A Fenty Gloss Balm. That was the gloss that got me back into gloss. I used that one up in just about a year. And by the end of that year, which I think was beginning of 2019 or December 2018, by that point in time, I was like, oh yeah, gloss, I'm into you. I'm into you a lot. Uh, yeah, I would rebuy one of those gloss balms in an instant. Another, a few other color lip products. I don't go through many color lip products, but the ColourPop Lip Satin Formula, I had a real big crush on those for a good while. The color The Rabbit, which is a similar tone to this, but slightly different. The Rabbit is like a pink, but it has a slight soft shift of blue in it. So the Ultra Satins are a formula that is generally matte, but not transfer proof. So it was a matte pink, but it had this like soft shift of blue. I went through one of those. And then London Fog is a red that's like an almost orange red. And I also, I think I almost went through. I, I used so much of it up that by the time it started to smell even slightly off, I was like, I got enough out of you. I've used you up. Those were true loves, but I haven't repurchased them just because lip gloss. But then so good. one of my all time like mascara loves was Glossier Lash Slick. This is the second one that I've used up. This used to be my absolute mascara love 
and then Essence slash Princess Waterproof was launched. And now that's gonna be the thing that I go back to over and over again. I've definitely gone through a whole glitter glue from NYX before. Fucking love this shit. And then there, there are a few of the ColourPop Super Shocks that I have hit pan on. I don't love these because I don't reach for little potted things much anymore. The one that I really wanted to show you that I can't find is Telepathy. That was my introduction to loving green. That is like a shiny olive green. It is super pretty and I hit pan on it like six months ago. The thing that's nice about the Super Shocks and what I was using Telepathy for previously in the past, this is a great in a rush uh, makeup choice. So I could throw one Super Shock, a mascara, brow gel, and maybe a blush into my bag and kind of do it on the run. And I would do that with telepathy and just use my finger and put it like on my lid and blend it out. And then the other one that I'm actually shocked at how quickly I hit pan on, this is Frog from ColourPop. I just got this over the summer, but this was my go-to summer eye. There was a, a chunk of time over the summer where it was just so hot and disgusting that I was barely doing makeup, if at all. And this is like um, a glittery, like wet eye look is how I describe it. Now, I've definitely heard some people say that this is like glitter fallout for them. I would probably, especially with like a full face on, put down some glitter glue, but because I was wearing it during the summer, probably when I was already sweaty and glowy and gross looking anyway, I didn't really notice the fallout. But I do love a good color that's like glittery and like wet looking. I'll do that from lash to brow and be a happy camper. So I've been thinking on this for a little bit. I didn't go through all of my eyeshadows, but I'm pretty sure the only powder eyeshadows that I've hit pan on are from the Modern Renaissance, which looks absolutely disgusting. This was my like one of my first like high-end mid-range eyeshadow loves. I used Tempura down to the bone and I love Golden Ochre or I did love it. I really don't reach for this anymore. I put this in my project pan and I told myself I was gonna reach for it. I just don't, I don't. It's just not my, not my color story anymore. And I don't know if this is actually like expired on me and that's why I'm not enjoying it the way I used to, or if I just don't go for this color story anymore. I mean, I think it's a little bit of both maybe. It doesn't do it for me anymore. If I did a serious declutter, this would, this would go actually. And then in terms of like skincare, there are so many things I've used up this year. Once I really put an effort on it, I used up my skincare. I, and I actually haven't bought skincare in a good chunk of time. And the last stuff that I've gotten, I've gotten like sample sets from Sephora using my rewards points, or like I have my birthday gift that I can add into my rotation. So I feel like I haven't bought skincare in quite a while and I've used up a lot of it, which all makes me very happy. I went through almost the whole bottle of, of maple raw water essence, something that I found at TJ Maxx that I quite like. Used up a Pixie Rose Flash Balm. Oh, the Mizan Snail Eye Cream. I had that from a while ago and just stopped using it and finally was like, you, you need to use it up. I used up a whole Drunk Elephant Eye Cream, the whole thing. And yes, I know how expensive those are but I used it up. So this year has been a good year for me actually going through my skincare. I've been really happy with that. There's still, I still have quite a few things in my collection that either I don't care that much about and I just need to use up. But instead of buying more things, I've been actually using things up, which is a nice change compared to my makeup spending habits. And then the other thing I've noticed a lot this year is that a lot of my liquid glitters have just gone off. They've just dried out. I just don't think I'm going to be buying those anymore. It's another thing I think if I did a hard declutter right now, I'd probably get rid of most of them just because they're taking up space. Just to end on an annoying note, the thing that I've had in my project pan since February that I cannot seem to use up is the Balm.com Cherry Flavor Scent whatever from Glossier. February. 
I can't use it up. It's like never ending. And I don't hate it enough just to throw it away, but I don't like it. So annoying. It's so annoying. Now we're done. Now we're officially done. Was that interesting? Do you enjoy watching that? Do you prefer actual empties where I'm showing you physical pieces of trash? That's not really my vibe, but let me know. If you're watching this and you have not yet subscribed, I would love to have you as a new subscriber following along with my colorful shenanigans. If you have anything that you finished up this year or hit pan on that you're super proud of, leave it in the comments, let me know. I'd love to hear what I, you keep going back to. Thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye friends.